That's a bit of a dreary day today, April twenty, uh, April the second, and it's such a bizarre situation we're living in, <laughs> so-called pandemic. I go down to the clinic to renew a prescription because there's a pharmacy attached, and uh, for a pandemic, you know, you'd think you'd be hearing constant screaming of sirens as the ambulances are carting the dead or dying to the uh, morgue or to the hospital. You know, really, there weren't all that many people uh, at the clinic. And I was in there yesterday as well, just to check up on something. And uh, I think there was about three, maybe four what looked like human beings sitting in the waiting room again in a pandemic <laughs> where you would expect uh, the entire waiting room would be packed and uh, the dead and dying lying and sitting about outside but that's not the case i'm jiggling the camera around a little bit over this this uh, work in progress um, just uh, pull this out and set it up on the easel and expect I will be completing this here uh, within uh, short order. I just got to finish up the, the two humanoids in there and put face masks on them and uh, just tighten up the details a bit here and there. I, mean, I was thinking of putting a tent in the middle there as well. And I'll call it the uh, death of humanity. You know, here are two people <laughs> camping with face masks on. That's how absurd this whole COVID cost is. And it is so obviously nonsense. But anyway, I just, uh, this is the area where I tend to paint. There's another work in progress. Uh, it'll be a river uh, scooting by there with a bunch of, you know, uh, flotsam and jetsam, dead trees and stuff, you know. Uh, lying in the foreground as uh, generally the rivers are river banks are uh, well at least here in the Rockies it's always you know lots of dead wood and such and then there's a picture underneath that uh, I just got to put some snow into the uh, various crotches in the in the trees there various branches where they come off the trunk there would be some snow accumulated in there so that's a picture, <laughs> turn the camera, and then you can see it sitting that way. But uh, anyway, uh, it is a bit of a dreary day uh, outside. It's really gray and, and, you know, not really pleasant. And uh, I've been really uh, kind of wondering whether there is any point really of doing uh, videos uh, at this time. Um, I've got a little bit demoralized actually quite frankly and that's why I haven't been posting. Bitshoot has become a real problem. I'm having a real problem trying to upload uh, uh, episode 18 uh, for my two bits worth TV. Episode 18 is the episode in which um, I actually uh, reveal the uh, Charter Challenge that uh, that I have uh, submitted but it just will not allow me to post and then I did try it for <laughs> from since January I've tried posting that and uh, anyway I'm, I'm hoping you guys <laughs> enjoy this little bit of me fussing about with the camera as I you know I'm doing this a new kind of approach there you get a little close up but uh, here I'll just um, zooming back a bit. Ah, you know, sometimes for those of you who don't do videos, you know, I don't know, it's kind of fun to watch somebody putzing about with their camera and yakking at the same time. But uh, what I thought I would do today uh, is to uh, further the conversation regarding uh, the uh, international parasite. And uh, one thing that I have been doing, I've not been posting videos, but uh, I do consistently comment uh, where comments are requested. 
in various um, in various places. You know, uh, I, I do like to get involved in the conversation, and uh, there is a, certainly a lot of uh, yakety yak out there, uh, but and a lot of protesting uh, about the COVID of course, the uh, COVID tyranny that's been imposed. And, uh, you know, really, I do shake my head and wonder how is it possible that uh, apparently intelligent human beings have uh, submitted so easily to this tyranny and are walking around with face diapers. Indeed, it's uh, been brought to my attention recently that the blue uh, surgical face masks are actually impregnated with uh, fibers that are similar to asbestos and are intended to destroy people's lungs. I mean, who comes up with that kind of an idea to, to even do that? Plus, it is alleged there may be Morgellons fibers in some and uh, that it's even possible that uh, some sort of nanotechnologies are impregnated and uh, that's what's being breathed in uh by the people wearing those silly things it's a real wonder to me that people uh do that so easily but anyway i thought what i might do is um instead of you know doing some kind of a complex um pictorial uh i'm just going to uh, read a few of my comments uh, ones that I posted uh, in response to issues raised in various venues, uh, various platforms, and uh, I thought that maybe I might start out with uh, reading uh, this particular one uh, to start off. Uh, it is uh, titled, To Be a Jew Means You Have to Subscribe to the Talmud. So to be a Jew means you have to subscribe to the Talmud which teaches that the law for the Jew is he must lie, cheat, steal, and even kill Goyim, that is, we who are not Jews. Goy means, quote, an animal in human skin, and that is what Jews think the rest of us are, animals in human skin. And just like we have animal pets whom we love, uh, so uh, do the Jews look at us as their pets, and the pets think, hmm, that is a nice Jew. They are all in on it, to a lesser or greater degree, and they all can't wait until our numbers are reduced with their final push to take control of the entire planet and make the rest of us slaves with no property but lots of happiness, according to the present cartoon cue ball Jew named Klaus Schwab, a preposterous narcissist who ought to be treated the way we would treat our dog if it gets out of hand. We give it a good swat on the arse. If it hurts a human, we usually shoot it. Well, the Jews are hurting us more and more by the day now that they have convinced the animals in human skin to voluntarily accept an injection of some sort of cocktail which could very possibly wipe out humanity. I take exception to that and am advocating we stand up to the international parasite and exterminate it like we would do with a cockroach infestation. It's the only solution. The problem that uh, I have and a few others with a lot of people out there espousing the truth, Henry Macau, for example, you know, uh, Mr. Um, Adams, Mike Adams, and others, they are, you know, saying things, Brother Nathaniel, another good case in point, you know, the stuff that he espouses, it's things that the Jews don't care that we know because their attitude is, what are we going to do about it? They control absolutely everything that is, uh, uh, you know, anything to do with making money and, uh, and subjecting us to uh, ever more slavery. Well, uh, that, they're all in on that. And it's like I say, uh, you may have a so-called friend who is a Jew, but uh, given that to be a Jew, you have to be a subscriber to the Talmudic tradition. 
It's not a racial thing other than most of the people or the creatures professing to be Jews are the descendants of Khazarians. Uh, they're not even uh, originating in Palestine. There's but a very small, small percentage of the collective parasite uh, that are uh, of origin. Their, just their uh, ancestors are of origin in the Middle East, but those are the Sephardic Jews of Spain, for example. But the majority of the Jews are Ashkenazi, and uh, they're descendants of, uh, of Khazars. And uh, I've got another comment I wrote about uh, the uh, Khazar and uh, what that entails. And so I'm just going to shut the camera off for a moment because I have to locate that particular uh, comment and it didn't pop up immediately as I opened up the notes. So the first comment then that uh, you, know, uh, you can make note of is this one about what it is to be a Jew. Uh, and so the next one I'm going to look for is uh, my comment regarding Khazaria and, the, and what it is to be a Khazarian. So just hang on a moment. Okay, here we go. This is, uh, and you'll see me looking sort of past the camera as I'm reading off my uh, large screen. Uh, so that's my teleprompter. <laughs> we'll do. I'm reading from the teleprompter. Here I am, demented old. Can't remember my name. I think it's Bi 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 Biden. Is it Biden? Yeah, I don't know. I, hey there, ho, Camelot! Can you come on over here, you old bitch? Come here. Tell me what's my name. Ha 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 ha. Oh, sorry about that, folks. That's uh, Ho Kamala Harris, the camel, <laughs> appropriately named camel, because she essentially humped her way to the top, a cackling creature, and demented Joe Biden having to read off teleprompters, and he can't even do that very well. What a circus. And to think, four years, Donald Trump had time to drain the swamp, and the swamp has not been drained. You know, and now all the patriots, all the Trumpers and so on are all being set up, I think. You know, they expect that uh, he's going to come back like a white knight on a, you know, white horse and he's going to save the world. Uh, I'd like to hope so, I'd like to think so, but hope, hopium. Um, you know, he's been rubbing shoulders with the Jews in Jew York and elsewhere his entire life. And uh, I don't know, you know, is he a Trojan horse for the Jews? Uh, he's entirely surrounded by Lubavitchers and other creatures like that. Disgusting, vile chicken swingers. And, uh, you know, I think he's going to come back, retake the presidency, which, of course, is still his. And because uh, the whole thing was a total fraud, that election. As so much in politics is fraudulent and uh, you know they all hope that they can get away with it and then the moment they're caught oh I didn't know or whatever and we never hold the creatures to account of course I'm strongly advocating that it's time for rope therapy for these criminals right down to city councils uh, these creatures uh, they are monsters they are hell-bent on killing us I take great exception to that. So, But anyway, I found the note that I was looking for. So here it is. Most of the body which makes up the international parasite is of Khazarian descent. Indeed, about 98% of the creatures who always have to let you know they are Jews and their grandmother or other was supposed to have been gassed but escaped with diamonds up her arse from Dr. Mangala twice or more and managed to make it in time for the chicken swinging festival they all have white skin but do not consider themselves white and are hell-bent upon the extermination of the real whites people like me and you know i suspect that most of you watching these videos um, so the dna of the khazars is a genetic a stew whereby various amounts of the ingredients manifest to a greater or lesser degree in the tentacles of the parasite. 
Casaria was already home to Neanderthal hybrids and was overrun by Huns, Mongols, Tartars, and Turks, which made the initial Khazarian genetic stew. When uh, Then, when that stew was stirred up by the visitation of Talmudic tentacles and their sizable entourage of courtesans, children for blood harvesting, and so forth, the final genetic ingredients were added to the gene pool of Casaria, and one of those elements is the draconian bloodline of which David Icke is so very familiar. So what we see in the creatures behind the Covidocast are Jews, and they are really genetically messed up and therefore exhibit upwards of 230 identifiable psychopathies. Does that explain why they do what they do and why we now need to get rid of the pests? All the COVID pushers are Jews. Bill Gates is a Jew, his creature is a Jew, Anthony Fauci is a Jew, Deborah Brooks is a Jew, all the heads of the poison factories are Jews, many, many politicians are Jews. Many in the law business are Jews, in the medical business are Jews. They're Jews, Jews, Jews everywhere. They own the mainstream Jews, their news, the mainstream news, the mainstream Jews. And uh, they are the ones spreading the so-called virus with their bullshit. And uh, for that alone, those creatures seriously need to be uh, flogged at the very least. Uh, I should suggest that maybe uh, some of those creatures uh, receive uh, uh, treatment with rods and some with axes as well uh, in a way that uh, real justice has to be uh, meted out now. They have killed many, many, many of us. Think about uh, Governor Cuomo, Governor Cuomo in New York. Uh, you know, it's alleged that uh, he's responsible for the deaths of thousands of uh, old people in, uh, in nursing homes uh, with the policies he implemented and then, of course, enforced by goons, simple morons with badges and batons who don't think about the orders they're given. They just simply follow the orders because that's what they do. So the fact that they are like that, they have totally thrown aside their conscience and being conscienceless, they are not human. A human being has a conscience. Automatons don't have a conscience. I, in other words, these creatures, these police, these policy enforcement units, they're no better than robots. And what do you do with an errant robot? You uh, push the kill switch and you dismantle the thing and use it for parts. And so uh, that's the kind of thing that really needs to happen now. We can't just talk around this whole story and, oh, yeah, it's got to be peaceful and we got to be so, you know, peaceful in, in dealing with the perpetrators of this colossal mass murder that's uh, ongoing, uh, the mass poisoning of the world's uh, population. And uh, we need to take exception to that. And therefore, the people that are perpetrating this entire hoax need to be exterminated, right down to the very last one pushing this agenda. And that, as I said, it goes all the way down to city councils. Uh, I've warned our city council, my city council here, uh, that uh, they are engaged in something very criminal. Indeed, I refer to them as the Council of Criminals. And uh, I can't wait for the day that uh, we go after them and to suggest that we can do it in our courts. I think that's really ludicrous. The courts are corrupt as hell. The fact that the judge receives automatically 30% of whatever the day's take is into his pension, his or her pension fund, that just shows you the level of corruption. There's no impartiality on the bench. And as I said, most of the uh, courts are absolutely infected with the uh, tentacles of the parasite. So to expect to get justice there. No, we need to now hold people's courts in public houses, appoint somebody smart to be a judge and uh, somebody to prosecute. Uh, the criminals can have a defense attorney 
but I think in many cases it's already a foregone conclusion. Their criminality has been so openly exposed, so widely exposed, that really the, the uh, verdict is already in. But we'll give them a trial, they can try to defend themselves, but when found guilty of this mask murder program, uh, going along with it and imposing these horrific tyrannies on the people, causing people to lose their livelihoods, their, their stores, their businesses, uh, children walking around with face diapers, their brains being compromised because of a lack of oxygen, people's lungs being compromised now with pleurisy, pneumonia, there's all kinds of issues accruing because of these horrific face masks, these face diapers, and the sheep will just go along with it, and they say it's the law. I blew my stack at my car dealer the other day and told him very loudly, I'm sure everybody in the entire dealership heard it, because I have a very booming voice when I use it that way, and uh, reminded everybody that it's not the law, and the whims of politicians is not the law. It's just simply the whims of criminals, and it's time to no longer go along with them, and uh, we have to start taking the law into our hands again and make these criminals extremely afraid of the repercussions that are coming. They have to be held to account, and uh, we can no longer pussyfoot around this issue. This is Gertjan Zwiglar for My Two Bits Worth TV, and uh, please stay tuned, there is more coming.